Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. Welcome to the Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. I am Tom Ricks, and this is a series called The Seven Sins of Silicon Valley. And today we're going to talk about Amazon. So Amazon is definitely not the worst of the top five. Uh, That would be Facebook. But it is definitely not the best behaved. Uh, It's probably, in terms of ranking, second worst. But where Amazon is kind of unique is that Jeff Bezos is bar none. Bar none, even even with the with the skanky behavior of Microsoft and Bill Gates, the clearest example of a robber baron that we have in the 21st century. At one point, he was the wealthiest man in the world, um, and is still pretty close to it. He he's kind of neck and neck with um, Elon Musk. And I already have done three full podcast episodes on Elon Musk, actually arguably four. And there's a hell of a lot more to come on SpaceX and Tesla. But, you know, as arrogant as Elon is and as many problems as Elon has, I got to tell you that doing research for this, even though I consider Facebook the worst company Amazon makes a pretty clear-cut case all on its own for the for the need to fix how we approach tech, tech companies. Um, there are so many things that they do that are wrong that I could do multiple podcast episodes on them and, and may still. Uh, just to list a few examples... Uh, you know, obviously their anti-union activities are very timely and notorious. They don't pay their taxes. They make deduct- They make donations to climate-denying um, Republicans, a lot of them. They, uh, they basically have terrible working conditions, and that's one of the ones we'll be focusing on today. Uh, you know, they make very questionable uh, things in general, in particular their facial recognition technology and and distribution of that is just frankly creepy. And they collect almost as much data as Facebook and Google and are super, super creepy about it. And, uh, you know, they are the best example of monopsony that I can think of. And and that's actually the source of the title, the subtitle of this episode, i.e., Walmart on steroids. For those of you not familiar with the term monopsony, let me compare and contrast, right? A monopoly is where you have one seller and there, that's it. That's all there is, right? So back in the day when you were the steel trust or the railroad trust, you'd have a bunch of these greedy robber barons get together and form a trust of their already obscenely large companies and fix the price, right? If, if all the major players, you know, imagine if today AT&T and T-Mobile and Sprint, well, there is no Sprint anymore, and Verizon all got together and said, you know what, we think you should pay twice as much as what you're paying now for your cell phone on a monthly basis and to get a cell phone. If the federal government d- didn't prevent them from doing that, you know, there would be very little that people could do. You might have a state government that stands up to them. But back in the 19th century, you had a corrupt federal government that actually not only allowed this kind of crap to happen, would sometimes prevent states from stopping it in the in the in the in the ridiculous belief that it was interstate commerce. In the 21st century, monopsony refers to one buyer, right? In other words, if 90% 90% of the independent, 90% of the book market, especially for small independent authors, is through Amazon, and it is. Then Amazon can pretty much do whatever it wants, right? I mean, it, 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 it's harder to maintain a monopoly in the sense on the web because you can just kind of go around it. But that's a little unrealistic now, isn't it? Because the fact of the matter is that. 
you can't start a company from your garage as easily as you could in the 90s, both because, A, it's a lot harder to get the attention of venture capitalists, and after the financial crash and the dot-com crash, venture capitalists are a lot more cautious sometimes. Sometimes they'll still buy into stupid, ridiculous Mr. Peanut Butter from uh, BoJack Horseman style ideas. But in general, the thing is, if you have a physical product and it's either a company you want to start or even worse, it's a company you've had, you know, for 20 to 100 years that makes a real thing like, you know, banjos or guitars or books or anything. Amazon is the big elephant in the room. And the whole reason that they are being sued by a number of people is because Amazon does this pernicious thing of, you know, it's like, oh, sure, come on board to our website. And, you know, let, let's say it's toothpicks, right? Toothpicks is a market. People buy them and you can buy them on Amazon. And when you go and sell your toothpick, right, you're going to, you know, go to if you go to Amazon and put in toothpicks, you're going to see that there's a lot of people that sell toothpicks. And they might like, you know, well, your toothpick has little flat, you know, plastic, stupid flags on them. So I really want your toothpick or your toothpicks come in colors. So that's great. Right. And here's the thing. Everybody or just about everybody who wants to sell toothpicks goes to Amazon and tries to sell there and compete with everybody else. And some people are successful and some aren't. And the ones that are successful usually have some kind of an edge. And Amazon sees all of this data right? They see who wins, who doesn't win, who succeeds and why and when. And they can take all this data and anytime they like, decide, you know what, we're going to go into the toothpick business. And they can take all of the information because they own the platform and, you know, take your strategy. And unless you have like a trademark or a patent to protect you, and even then, good luck in the courts because Amazon is a big and you are small, and they can bankrupt you in the courts and basically take all of your ideas and improve on it and call it the Amazon brand and put it above and better displayed on their platform. And there is not a dang thing to stop them from doing this. And it has taken 20 years for Amazon to finally get enough flack for doing this that people are starting to complain about their ability to do this. But but let, let's actually take, you know, some actual examples. And I'm not going to use a specific example, but I am going to, but th this does actually happen. And what I mean by that is very often in a small town, there is like one or two factories that employ everybody, right? They might make cars, they might make a particular car part, right? And previously, this was a big problem with Walmart. Walmart would come in and basically underbid because of their logistics and advanced ability to distribute goods, underbid in price every retailer in town. And so what would happen is all these mom and pop retail stores on Main Street go out of business and everybody goes to Walmart. And then all of a sudden, Walmart, which, you know, is basically just this giant concrete box, which dumps all of its things in with no, with no, almost no customer service and no thought to the customer beyond getting them in, getting them to buy what they want and getting them out the door, um, put a lot of companies out of business. And now your diehard conservative, and I've already established, I don't care what your diehard conservative thinks, but your diehard conservative would say, well, that's just capitalism and the natural evolution of business. Well, okay, except that Walmart cheated all the time and bribed regulators and put their stores where they weren't supposed to be. And it, it's just gross what, what Walmart did. But Amazon has done exactly that kind of thing as well, bribing politicians and taking advantage of the basically the fact that our democracy is insipid and weak and ensuring that there are no meaningful laws to protect consumer data or there are no meaningful laws to prevent them from, you know, going to a small town and say, you know, that small town has a one or two products that employ everybody in that town. And, you know, let's let's use an uh, heck, I'm going to go to Amazon right now and, and uh, look at 
uh, any random pro product that they're going to display. Yeah, okay, currently they have a deal for musical instruments right here. Uh, this little red keyboard. And I click on this thing, and I'm betting... I'm going to, so guitars, here's a really good, I know I'm going to go to keyboards, so I'm going to go to keyboards over here, and I'm going to look here, and I'm going to click electronic keyboards, and I'm going to go down, and lo and behold, there is Amazon Choice, and none of these appear to be Amazon, the, on a quick scan that I'm seeing, but the thing is that Amazon, anytime it wants, could decide it's going to do an Amazon brand keyboard. And let's say your company makes electronic keyboards. And like, that's one of the only employers in town. Amazon comes along and they're a huge chunk of the online marketplace. They're not all of them, but they're, they're the biggest player by far. And Amazon decides that it's going to make the Amazon brand electronic keyboard. All of a sudden your small town that depends on this is toast. And by the way, if you start to lose jobs in rural America, you're going to get angry and you're going to start listening to talk radio. And guess what? All of a sudden you're going to be, you know, thinking that the crazy demagogue that comes along and promises you the moon is your best buddy. And lo and behold, fascism starts to rise in the United States. So the fact of the matter is, is that none of these tech companies are operating in a vacuum. Every single freaking one of them, every one of them some more than others, is responsible for the rise of fascism in the world and in particular in the United States. And this is one of the reasons that Amazon is directly responsible for this, for killing jobs in rural America by underbidding small domestic manufacturers. And they do this actually all over the world, all over the world. And there are lawsuits, but it's going to take years to catch up. And at best, it's going to be probably settled out of court and Amazon will kind of fix its practices, but it may take two or three rounds of this before our incredibly slow legal system actually gets around to preventing Amazon from continuing to do this. And the fact of the matter is, Amazon should never have been allowed to get as large as they have been. And anyway, so, so I'm going to focus more now on the thing that Amazon is most notorious for, which is working conditions. Now, you don't see it talked about as much anymore, but... The, there's actually bad stories for them for white collar jobs and blue collar jobs. And I'm going to start with the blue collar jobs. And Jeff Bezos is like some OCD satanic crazy man when it comes to the, the conditions because Amazon literally went to court for the ability to charge its employees for the time that they clock in and have to go and uh, get dressed and go through these metal detectors and other security things. And Amazon didn't want to have to pay them for that. So in other words, to clarify, if you're an Amazon worker in an Amazon warehouse and you go to work and in that warehouse and you're fulfilling an order for somebody that orders something on amazon.com, then you have to go through all kinds of ridiculous and invasive security. Now, a Republican who has no common sense would say, well, that's, that's just in the interest of the business. Well, maybe it is. But the thing is, is that if it takes you 15 minutes to go in and out every single day, that's two and a half hours a week. Think about that. That's two and a half hours a week that Amazon is effectively controlling your time and you're an hourly employee getting paid at best $15 an hour and in most places, not that much. And you multiply that times 50, that's hundreds of hours, right? That's a lot of time. And you have multiply that over multiple years that you should be being paid by the company that's controlling your time on their property for their processes. But Amazon went to court and won in that they don't have to charge or they don't have to pay people for going through their stupid security. And it, and this is just one example. They Right now, if you're an Amazon driver, Amazon is trying to implement these super invasive practices where like they use 
LIDAR and facial recognition and all kinds of other biometric devices that other companies are using to create self-driving cars. But in Amazon, they want to analyze you down to the micro second to make sure that you're maximizing company efficiency. Amazon is, in my opinion, there, there's a movie called Elysium where in the future, all the rich people live in this orbital habitat and all the people on the ground have no jobs. And the only jobs that are available are to build security robots that oppress everybody in the world, right? And that, and that movie is mainly an, 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 an analogy for healthcare and how the protagonist has is sick and has to do all this action movie action movie type stuff to to get onto the space station to get cured and at the end somehow magically everybody gets healthcare because sure magic in hollywood but the fact is that amazon is the quintessential company because jeff bezos by the way is interested in space travel just as much as elon musk is even though he's not doing it as well and so Jeff Bezos is the kind of guy that in Space Sweepers, a Korean space thing, which is also pretty much the same kind of movie, uh, but better done. And, um, you know, you could easily see this techno billionaire in orbit living 150 years with rejuvenating nanotechnology where he has left the Earth just a giant trash heap without without anything now to be fair to jeff bezos unlike walmart who does not believe in giving anything back to the community at all they are notorious for not believing in giving to charity at all jeff bezos does actually donate to charity but as the wealthiest man in the world um i assure you that it's a drop in the bucket in the absolutely obscene wealth that this man has and in 2020 when huge chunks of America were losing their jobs. Um, basically, um, Bezos has earned more money this year than I believe he has ever earned. And Amazon is the richest company in the world because that's what made Jeff Bezos the richest man in the world. So, um, I guess... From my perspective, I think that billionaires in general are just gross. I've become convinced the more I've done this podcast and the more I've researched and the more I learn and the older I get, that instances of where someone actually deserves to be a billionaire are very rare. Now, I will say this for Jeff Bezos, unlike Elon Musk, who who has... Don't get me wrong, done some impressive things with Tesla and SpaceX. But Elon Musk does not deserve to be the richest man in the world. He, he will eventually deserve that when he has a, 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 a space company that is literally light years ahead of everybody else when it comes to space. But he hasn't earned it yet, right? He just hasn't. You look at Tesla's profits or SpaceX's profits and it's just not there. They will get there. Elon Musk eventually will deserve to theoretically be the, the richest man in the world, assuming we don't have some much needed, uh, you know, tax reform. But Jeff Bezos has under the unregulated grossness that is late stage capitalism actually built a solid business model that basically destroys wholesale segments of the economy and profits off of it. So that money at least comes from somewhere. And while I don't think he deserves to be the richest man in the world, he certainly has deserves it a heck of a lot more than Elon Musk. But the fact of the matter is that this man has done so by crushing his workers, preventing unionization, and taking advantage of every loophole that our anemic, dying capitalist supposedly kind of democratic system has allowed and the concept there was a concept in in the middle ages in feudalism called noblesse oblige which basically was that the smart nobles understood that first of all the peasants vastly outnumbered them and that 
because the the serfs had a, a, a feudal obligation to their feudal lord and would go to war for him and toil the land for him, that in turn their well-being was the responsibility of their, their feudal lord, right? And in the theory, right, America is not uh, the, the serfs of uh, Jeff Bezos, right? But he has no concept of giving back, not really. Right? He goes through the motions and gives some money to charity. But it's basically a farce. And so he's, all, he's almost as old as Bill Gates. Or approaching it, anyway. And, you know, he's starting to step down from Amazon, but he's focusing on space. He's not focusing on what Bill Gates did. You know, what, no matter what you think, or uh, whether you like it or not, about the Bill Gates Foundation... Bill Gates at least understood the concept of giving back, right? Steve Jobs was not great at it, but at least he understood the concept of giving back. Jeff Bezos is a taker. He is not a maker. He is a taker. And he has taken advantage of the stability of the United States and its legal system and the innovation of its workers and the productivity of its workers and basically bled America dry, doing everything he can and finding every loophole that he can to pay no taxes or clo as close to it as he possibly can. And even now, even now, when it is patently obvious to everyone, not just me, how broken and how insane and dark the Silicon Valley tech culture is, even now, literally yesterday, there was a story in the news about how Jeff Bezos has sent the marching order to the Amazon empire, which includes, among other things, the Washington Post and Amazon Prime and a, a, a commentariat section, not to mention the other random talking heads that th they bribe on the side because every major billionaire does that, that they need to start pushing back. Right? They need to start saying unionization is bad and Amazon is a great company and what's good for Amazon is good for America. Uh-huh. Right. No, it's not. And the fact of the matter is that unionization is what gave us the 40-hour work week. Unionization is what gave us the, work e the weekend and OSHA and workplace protections and minimum wage and the ability to even have a, minim a middle class in this country. And if it wasn't for unions and the labor movement, we would still have orphans working in fucking salt mines. And the fact of the matter is that we need unions in this country. And Amazon is the quintessence. When you have to pee in a jar because your productivity is going to go down if you go to the fucking bathroom, and Amazon denies it, but should we ever believe a tech lord? Should we ever believe one of these filthy Silicon Valley companies when they say, oh, well, that's nice, but uh, nerd, 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 drivel, 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 drivel. No, no, we shouldn't, right? A developer who spends his whole day coding and thinks that they understand climate change and how we don't need climate laws or carbon taxes because they know how to do a spreadsheet. La-di-da! Excuse me? Just because you know math in one area doesn't mean you know math in other areas. It, it would be, th that's the equivalent of an auto mechanic thinking that they could go to the particle accelerator at CERN and say, well, I know how to fix a car, so I can totally you understand particle physics. Just because you can sling code doesn't mean you understand how to build a climate change model or track the weather or track a hurricane or understand and agree with Ayn Rand that unions are bad and that the almighty dollar is great. I'm sorry, just because you have one narrow skill set in one area does not mean that you have skill sets in other areas. It just does not happen, folks. I know some developers, and some of them are really smart, really good people, and others are arrogant. 
unbelievably arrogant. And you see that reflected in each and every single one of these tech lords. You see the unbridled hubris that these people have in thinking that they can dictate our society and move fast and break things and not have to pay for it. I'm sorry, Jeff Bezos, you break it, you bought it. You become the richest man in the world on the back of your workers, then you're going to get taxed. And the bill will come due sooner or later, mark my words. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but sooner or later that unregulated, unearned wealth will be taken and clawed back by the people of the United States of America. This has been the Tossing Grenades at Windmills podcast. Buy my book, Have Name Will Travel, at Amazon and other markets. RedAnvilCreative.com contains all our podcasts. Copyright 2021. To fight the forces of evil!